Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone's having an amazing day. Now today guys, I'm going to be completely cleaning and revamping the polytunnel, the cacti and succulent plant polytunnel. And those of you who've been watching, watching my other vlogs will know that uh, I brought all of the cacti and succulent plants that are not cold hardy into the house now to overwinter. And it's been a very sort of busy couple of weeks bringing all the plants that aren't, can't take cold temperatures into the house. And um, I'm gonna be doing a full complete indoor house plant and cacti and succulent plant um, update coming up probably in a few days time of how the ones that we bought in look now we've rearranged them all and they're looking pretty good but this is what we got left with here in the in the big polytunnel and the majority of our cacti suckers do stay out here now these all in here are going to be staying out for the winter the reason being is these ones can take cold temperatures up to um, a minimum of about 5 degrees Celsius, which is about 41, 40 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit, as long as they are kept totally dry and not watered over the winter. And other than a few of the aloes, which I've got on the shelf over here, some of these do flower in the winter. And as you can see, some of them are sending out flower buds already. I will be watering these very slightly, perhaps once a month. Um, and maybe some of the crassulas and some of the jades and anything that's still sort of coming into winter growth because some of the succulents do want to continue to grow over the winter but I still keep them the majority of them all dry and when I do water any it's very light and these are all I said we've got a mixture of many many different cacti and succulents in here a little bit all over the place because I'm a bit uh, probably a bit of an OCD thing I like to have everything nice and tidy and all the all the type of genesis more or less grouped together depending on their sizes but it's just much easier um, not only when you're caring for them but when people come in to view the polytunnel including myself it just looks more aesthetically pleasing but because we've been bringing so many plants in and out as you can see we've got plants on the floor plants everywhere loads of gaps where we've been taking plants in and out so what I'm going to be doing in this a bit of a polytunnel vlog series, not sure how long it's going to go on for, but I'll probably do it in over the over the section of about three days, three, possibly four days, because it's too much to do in the one day, is what I'm going to be focusing on today is I'm going to be take clearing these three tra trays away, moving some plants over onto there, giving this table a really good clean and these three black trays a really good clean. As you can see, there's soil everywhere, bit of a mess and um, soil everywhere and bits of dead leaves can collect fungus. So this is all gonna be cleaned up. And then I'm going to be um, rearranging some of the little seedlings here on the tray, um, just putting taller ones at the back, smaller ones at the front, because these ones are all old enough now to stay outside to overwinter in the polytunnel. I won't be watering these at all because they're big enough to stand on their own their own little roots now and having a, a proper winter dormancy and all our other seedlings that are still actively grown we've got under the grow lights in our grow rooms upstairs and we've got some serious cacti here and obviously these very big tall ones here so these are going to be rearranged and some of these smaller ones are possibly going to be going onto the onto the trays here um, get them off the floor because they can fit onto the trays and um, that's what I'm going to be doing in this video guys so what I'm going to focus on first is cleaning these tables I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done there you go that's the three trays all took off the table cleaned underneath and all the trays cleaned now to bring on some of the tall guys now quite often when you have plants that are outside like we had these outside in our yard during the summer um, obviously the moss grows on top of the, the soil and when these totally dry out the moss often just goes yellow and dies off it's not really harmful to the plants but in this case it's still quite damp so I want these plants to be really dry before the real cold weather hits hits out and plus it looks more aesthetically pleasing to remove the moss I think so I'm just using a little a little fork here to gently loosen the moss and uh, to take it off now that's the first two tables with all of the serious type of shorter uh, serious cacti on these first two tables here. As I say, I've moved, moved them off the floor there and left the big taller ones that are going to be freestanding here in the polytunnel. And what I've done here, a mixture of all different types of um, 
cereusy type of cacti, mostly all trichocereus and um, some cloister cactus here as well. And this trichocereus is one that Hans has grown from seed many years ago when he lived in Sweden. It's a lovely multi-headed specimen. Um, this one here is a trichocereus pacanoi, um, commonly known as the San Pedro cactus, that was grown from our friend Jake in Dublin um, from seed. Here we have um, cloister cactus candelii um, here with um, a little baby uh, cutting there also. And another type of cloister cactus, not quite sure which one. And here we have um, a cloister cactus samapatanus um, here. And it is sort of in bud. I don't think the buds are going to stay at this time of year, but because we've had some pretty mild and quite sunny weather here for um, autumn in Ireland, they're sort of coming into bud again. Um, that's that lovely sort of red spine there. And that's because it's a leaning plant, it's sort of leaning on here and protected by this. And um, this one here is also, this is a cloister cactus. Um, yet yeah, uh, Johnsonii here and um, here is a cloister cactus vulpis corda and it has also been flowering also come back into bud again just coming into flower there as you can see and here we have some other types of trichocereus varieties trichocereus scopolicola and this one is another trichocereus type here this is trichocereus scopolicola where it went black at the top and we had to cut it and it's forming a puff um, at the back here we have trichocereus um, Bridgesii monstrose, commonly known as the penis cactus because of its obvious, obvious funny appearance. And uh, here we have some little um, Trichocereus pacanoi, um, commonly known as the San Pedro cactus seedlings that I've grown from seed um, back in 2016. And there's another one there at the back there, absolutely cute. And what I'm going to be doing, obviously with these, I've raked all the, all the moss off the soil, is I'm um, let the soil dry a little bit at the top. And then I'm going to top dress all these with some nice grit to finish them all off and make sure that they've all got labels in as well, the ones I can label. So um, it just looks a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So that's then two tables done. Now what I'm going to be doing here is moving these onto here and then cleaning these next two tables. Ooh, that's a third tray done and I have the majority of well, all of our um, Lophophora cacti on this tray here and also we have some Matucana cacti here and a little serious that I just thought looked nice there um, our two different types of Matucanas four I should say um, this is Matucana madicinorum again forming flower buds at this time of year in November guys but as I say we've had pretty good sunny weather and very mild for um, this time of year in Ireland. So I think they're the getting more sun now than we did in the summer. It's crazy, guys. And then here we have all of our Lophophoras, lots and lots of different types. All of these ones here, we have grown ourselves from seed and uh, they're doing very, very well. These ones are ones that I've, I've purchased over the years, some of the Mahonsies as well. This is Lophophora caspostitosa, it's a multi-headed specimen, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, the same with this one here. And these are my two very, very old, the very, very old first one I ever, ever got was actually this one here. And I got it from uh, Glastonbury Town, from a little shop selling uh, cacti. And I just fell in love with it, didn't even know what it was at the time. Um, and I just thought it was very unusual. It was absolutely tiny when I got it, guys. I mean, it was probably quarter of the size of this one here the guy I got, I got it from from the shop had grown it himself from seed and this plant I got this when I was 23 and I'm now 48 so it's very very old very slow well very slow growing as Lophophora is um, but wonderful and what I'm going to be doing as I say once all the, the polytunnels done the same as I mentioned with these I'm going to be top dressing them all and making sure they've all got all got labels because some labels are missing and I started to top dress some of them um, the other time and I never got any further but I'm going to be doing all of that as well in a separate blog. So now what I'm going to be doing, before I go on to clean this tray, I'm going to carry on what I said I was going to do originally here, is sorting out these seedlings and um, this is them all on here, uh, putting some taller ones to the back, giving a, the tray a bit of a clean and then showed you what it looks like when I've rearranged it. Now that's all the seedlings rearranged. And as I say, we have the ones that, the, seed, the very young seedlings up in our grow rooms that want to continue growing, but these are all the ones that um, are going to be overwintering. They're more than, more than a couple of years old, most of these, if not all of them. And um, aren't they gorgeous, guys? Lots and lots of different types. And I'm going to be very busy next spring potting on all of these little cuties, these little cloister cacti, aren't they gorgeous? And Cory panthers and Labivias, Mammillarias, absolutely gorgeous. Now, 
I decided to keep the these little Echinopsis uh, subdenidatus, little baby ones, aren't they cute? I'm going to put these, because they're quite large, with the Echinopsis cacti when I do, um, do the display with them. And um, what I'm going to be doing now is giving the, the fourth tray along a good clean and then putting some cacti on there. Now I decided to go ahead and clean this tray too. <laughs> and what I'm going to be doing on here is putting the what's some of the best of the best cacti that we have onto these two trays here to put a really stunning display because obviously this is one of the main tables in the polytunnel and as I say I like to group cacti into some type of genus order but sometimes it's what looks the best obviously and um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. pick some cacti to put on these tables and they show you the display afterwards. Woohoo! That's all of this side of the table done and um, have to say I'm very happy with how it's looking and I never say I normally keep a lot of the genus all together but I have mi mixed and matched a few here because I think it looks more aesthetically pleasing to have a few little taller ones in between the more globular type of cacti and as I say I've got some of the shorter serious types here on the first two tables um, for, sorry the first two trays and most of the Lophophorus in fact all of the Lophophorus and the Matacanus on the third tray and then here on the last two trays for today, I have some of the creme de la creme of our cacti and succulents, guys. And um, these are what we say are most beautiful. And here we have an absolutely incredible Luxembourgia principis. And this one is a new addition. And um, we have this one here that I've grown for many 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 years well over 20 years and it was very very tiny when I got it and that's the size of it now I did a repot video probably a month or two ago on this this beauty but this one here is one we got from our our wonderful late friend Bill who was the honorary secretary here at the Belfast branch of um, the British Cactus and Succulent Society so it was one of his lovely old old Luxembourgers he's had for a very 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 long time so um, this is going to be well loved and cared for and here again is also um, a Mammillaria um, this one is Mammillaria um, Perez Perez I'll just check the label up here because <laughs> it's a new one for us as well. Um, Mammillaria Perez, Perez de Carosi CA and um, gorgeous um, dark um, brown hooked spines on it. Beautiful. So that's a lovely, again, this was from uh, our late friend Bill as well from the Cactus Society. It's going to be also well loved and cared for. Uh, the same as this one also for, was from Bill's collection. Um, the Mammillaria um, Gracilis Snowdrop, absolutely beautiful, and it's coming into bud as well, which is lovely to see. This is my old Rebusia, um, mus uh, Rebusia, um, this perplexa, it is absolutely beautiful, albipilosa, sorry. This one is ab Rebusia albipilosa, absolutely beautiful. I had this for absolutely years, probably about 25 years. When I got it, it was about that little size like that, and it's multi-pupped over the years. Be and it has beautiful orange flowers on it when it flowers as well. And here is also also my Mammillaria com common, uh, com common, Mammillaria commonae. Um, let's double check common <laughs> yes it has a lovely um, browny sort of caramel colored spines and um, this one is also one of my um, mammillarias as well um, not quite sure of this one but it's a lovely sort of woolly variety I've had for many 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 years this one is also my mammal mammillaria plumosa I've had for many years as well most of these I've had for many years this one here is my old ferro cactus that has pupped out at the top when it went uh, rotted at the top and I had to do an emergency cut many years ago now over 20 years ago and it's all pupped out at the top amazing and this one here is a new addition from our wonderful friend Daz um, Daz and Edith from Cactus Mania um, when we did the unboxing video this is ferrocactus gracilis coloratus gorgeous spines and this one here is one also from our, our late friend bill from the cactus society a gorgeous um, ferrocactus here absolutely wild wacky spines and so the two together look amazing and um, as i say some other ones here telocactus as well and other two um two different types of telocactus here i just thought they look really lovely because they, they are one of our all of our best type of looking cacti and a lot of age to these so these are in pride of place here too this one as well as our neopoteria 
Um, Clavata also gives it to us from Daz from, and Edith from Cacti, Cacti Mania. Beautiful. And it's still got little buds on it. Um, it's going to be interesting if it does flower. Probably not at this time of year. But um, it's be interesting to see. So a lot of different ones on there. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's little video vlog of rearranging the polytunnel. And as I say, that this is this side of the polytunnel done. I have got all, this is all the succulents, as you can see, pretty much of a mess at the moment. Plants everywhere. I'm going to be carrying on with that. But what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is carrying on this side. I'm going to concentrate on all the cacti for now and then go back to the succulents. These are all succulents on here. These probably need a good old tidy up too. I'm going to be coming back to them. Um, so tomorrow's video vlog, as you can see, there's lots of gaps now, lots of space where I've been moving, moving plants. So I'm going to be rearranging all this, doing exactly the same type of things I did on, on this side taking all the trays off, giving it all a good clean and then rearranging um, all the cacti again. So stay tuned for tomorrow's revamping and cleaning the polytunnel vlog. And thank you guys so much for watching. And if you want to know a little bit more on how to grow cacti and succulents, including how to overwinter your cacti and succulents, please do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. And I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye. And look at this lovely zigzag epiphyllum all in bud. Ooh. <laughs>